G'day folks, MBS. In today's little talk I'm going to uh, discuss how to test ignition coil. Now I've got two coils here available to me. I've got an old can type coil, uh, which they just call an oil can in the old days, and I've got a transformer looking type coil. Now that's still a transformer, because that's what a coil actually is. It transforms 12 volts into something like 20 plus thousand volts all right and when you're talking well this fella here will pull out more than 20,000 um, more likely about 25 40,000 and a coil on plug is more likely to produce somewhere around about 35,000 volts to about 60,000 so yeah now inside the coil there is what's called a primary windering and a secondary winding. Now the primary winding is made up of a copper wire and it's thick wire but it's only got a few turns in it so it's wound around a conductor inside this can or inside here as well um, and it's only got a few turns maybe about 150 turns going around a conductive core. The secondary winding uh, is a thinner wire like thousands and thousands of turns like we're talking uh, in this one, uh, probably about 15 to 18,000 turns of the uh, thin wire. In this little fellow, probably about 20 to 30,000 turns in the secondary winding. And in a coil on plug, probably about 30 to 50,000 uh, windings of that uh, secondary winding. Uh, so that ratio between the primary and secondary winding determines the output of the coil yeah um, so and the voltage going in of course the higher the voltage the more current that can be put through the circuit so to test this all you need is a little multimeter okay so you can check the resistance of the uh, windings and uh, just before we go there a little fun fact and I've got it written down actually because it's something I don't generally remember but a six cylinder distributor turning at say 5,000 RPM has to produce 252 sparks a second. Hey, 252, holy crap. If that was a V8, how many sparks do you reckon would be that would put out in one second? All right, doing about six and a half grand, like a good performance motor, yeah? 433 sparks a second. God, you thought you had a stressful life. This little sucker here knows all about stress. All right. So, uh, marvelous little device, what it does, and how many times it does it per second is incredible. Uh, so, it has to be in good condition. So, what we're checking for is the resistance of the primary and secondary circuits. Uh, make sure the resistances are within specifications. Now, I don't have specifications for ignition coils. If I want to know that, I have to go to my books and look up each individual vehicle that I'm working on and look up that value of the primary and secondary winding resistance. Uh, but we'll work on rough figures, yeah, when, as I go through it, what we're looking at. So I'm, we'll get the camera in, we'll set it up, and I'll show you what terminals we're going to uh, put the ohm meter on and what values we should roughly have. Righto. The primary circuit is the positive and negative terminals on the ignition coil. All right, so we'll put the lead on the primary and we'll put the lead on the secondary and we should get a resistance reading. Now I keep harping on this every time you see me use this multimeter, I always whinge that it's, uh, its count is very slow. Uh, so a good multimeter, as soon as I put them on, I would have got a reading, but mine takes time. All right, we've got 4.3 ohms. To me, that's a little high for an old coil. I would have looked at anywhere between 1.2 and 3 for an old coil. All right, so that's probably a bit high. Now, the secondary circuit is between the coil tower and the negative side of the coil. So we want to check the secondary circuit. So make sure that's touching inside. Now the resistance on the secondary circuit is much higher. Okay, we're talking kilo ohms now. So now we've got 6.95 kilo ohms. All right, uh, 
not a bad figure I guess a um, little bit low I would think I would have expected 8 to about 12 oh well that's okay we'll see how it performs all right so that's all there is to testing the primary and secondary circuit there is one more test however and that is from the body of the can to all these terminals so I probably just should have left that there while it was still sitting there should get an overload also should get an overload there should be no contact between any of these terminals and the windings to the cam if there is obviously that coil probably won't work and uh, you need to throw it away now one reason this can occur let's say we have a resistance reading between the can and the positive terminal it could be the clamp it's been clamped too tight uh, in its clamp and it's crushed the can up against the uh, uh, not the wires directly but against the insulation crushed the insulation internally and uh, eventually that uh, insulation that's wrapped around the windings could end up having the windings touch the case uh, so yeah that is a bad thing if you had resistance in any of these three terminals to the can all right let's check out the uh, transformer looking coil actually on second thoughts let's just do a quick test uh, see if this coil actually works eh? <clears throat> now I don't have a, a HT lead but a, a piece of copper wire between uh, the HT output and the spark plug will work and we just need to get a wire from the negative of the coil through to the points and condenser and all I need to do is supply battery voltage here and then spin the distributor and I should get a spark out of that spark plug just there so there we go let's see what we get oh look at that can that come up from camera let's have a look all right well that worked pretty good didn't it got a nice spark and it's uh bluish whitish so it's perfect that coil works wonderful so uh let's, now let's go to the transformer type okay no difference in checking a transformer style coil luckily on here we've got positive and negative marked on the two terminals it would not matter if it wasn't marked because it didn't matter which way I put these leads I would still get the same resistance so you can see on an newer type coil <clears throat> the resistance is a fair bit lower so we've got 0.5 ohms now to check the secondary resistance we need to go between the negative and the output coil output there so we'll leave that one on there and transfer it over to the secondary post and we've got 7.46 kilo ohms all right that seems to be within specs would want to be it's brand new coil <laughs> okay and on this one you want to make sure that there's no continuity between any of these terminals of course and this solid core here the mounting bracket plus the uh, iron core in the middle of the coil so let's uh, check this one for a start should be overload yeah not a problem how about that one not a problem and that one not a problem okay so that coil tests up okay now if you want to check a coil over plug coil um, I don't have one here to show you, but uh, I do know they have multi terminals, and the multi terminals are there for a feedback back to the ECU to tell the ECU if the coil is actually fired. So you get a, a trouble code will come up on your uh, ECU if uh, you start getting an engine that's missing because the coil misfire. All right, won't tell you if your spark plug's gone. All right, so if you get a misfire. Uh, code in your computer it's not the coil it's it's uh, sorry it's not the spark plug it'll be a coil and it'll tell you which number it is too but make sure you get a wiring diagram so you know which two terminals you're testing the primary and secondary circuits um, 
because it's unclear on the coil housing, they don't number them, uh, or they may even number them, but they don't tell you if it's a positive or negative. So testing a coil over plug, uh, you'll definitely need a wiring diagram to know which terminal is doing what. All right, guys, and that's about it for the uh, good old humble coil test, and we'll catch you in another video.